All right, here's another question from Vector Calculus involving divergence and curl. Okay, so let, let, let's do the problem and work it out. So we're asked to compute the divergence and the curl of f. Okay, that is, uh, this is sometimes called also div f, and this is sometimes called or written as curl f. Okay, it's up to you. And this funny little triangle is just an operator that involves partial derivatives. Yeah? It's called Nabla, upside down triangle. Okay, so writing it this way with the dots and the crosses, it tells you actually how to compute it. So let's talk about this first. Now I'm not going to write these as col I'll, I'll write these as columns, right? Just, uh, just in this case. Okay, so you can take this. If you don't want to write the i's, j's, k's down, you can you can write it like this, or you can write this as a row. It's up to you. Okay, you take the components of this. Write that as a column, say, or a row. It's up to you. And then you would expand it like you would with any dot product or scalar product. You take the first component over here, and it acts on the first component over here. The second component over here acts on the second component. Third component acts on the third component. And you add them all up. Okay? So we're not multiplying here. These DDXs and DDYs, etc., are acting. They're acting on these functions. Okay? So let me write that out and I'll show you what I mean. So this is shine, not sine hx. All right. So it looks a bit um, crazy, but actually it's pretty easy to compute. So, oh, sorry, <laughs> derivative of shine is cos, and derivative of cos is shine. <laughs> OK, so if you differentiate this, you'll get cos x plus shine y. And derivative of this with respect to z, imagine everything's constant except for the z, you'll get negative x, y. OK? Now, the important thing here is if you look at the form of your answer, it's not a vector, it's just a function. And if you plug in values into that, you'll get a number. So whenever you take the divergence of something, you won't get a vector. That's the important thing. OK? All right, so the second part of this question asks us to calculate the curl. So let's go through and, uh, and calculate that. Now, with the, with the curl, you can use a determinant, right? OK, so you write this. Uh, anyone still going with this one? OK, so with the curl, you write, the it's just like a cross product. You write the i, j's, k's along the top. You write the differential operators along the middle line. And then you write the components of f along the bottom line. OK, so I've sort of squished it in there. OK, so with determinants, you can uh, expand along the top line, or the top row, if you like. And um, so you start with i, you cover up the row and the column that i's in, and you multiply it by the t determinant of what's left. Move on to the j, cover up the j, the row and the column that j's in, and you multiply by the determinant of what's left. Move on to the k, cover up the row and the column that k's in, and you multiply by the determinant of what's left. Okay, that's the easiest, for me, that's the easiest cover-up method. It means that you don't have to remember um, anything, really. So let's start with the i. Now, the determinant of what's left. We're not multiplying here. These things are acting on these functions. So it's ddy of that minus ddz of that. Okay, so I'll write it out just so we're all clear. Okay, so I'll evaluate that in a minute. Okay, move on to the J. Now, 
When you go from letter to letter, you change the sign. Otherwise, the, uh, this expansion won't work. Okay, so ddx of that minus ddz of that. Okay, then onto the k, we go back to a positive. Cover up the uh, row and the column that k is in and multiply by the determinant of what's left. Uh, oh, hang on, it should be a y. Cosh y. Okay, let me fix that up. Cosh y. Okay. All right. Okay, so with two by two determinants, just work in a um, in a diagonal fashion. So it's ddy of that minus ddz of that, ddx of that minus ddz of that, ddy of that minus uh, sorry ddx of that minus ddy of that. Okay, looks like a lot of calculations, but they're but they're pretty simple actually. So ddy of that is going to be negative xy. Uh, sorry, negative xz, right? Ddz of that is going to be zero. So in this first element, it's going to be that. Let's move on to the j. ddx of that is going to be negative yz. ddz of that is going to be 0. Okay. And finally, let's move on to the k. ddx of that is going to be 0. ddy of that is going to be 0. So that's just going to disappear. Okay, so it's going to be negative xzi plus yzj. And if, uh, uh, J. And if you wanted to write that as a column, say, you could write it like this. Okay. All right, so compare your answer with the previous thing we calculated. You now get a vector for your answer. So when you're computing the curl, you should always get a vector. Just like when you compute a cross product, you should always get a vector. Okay, so if you compute the, the divergence and you get a vector, something's wrong. And if you compute the curl and you get a, 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 a number or a real valued function, there's something wrong. If you don't get a vector, there's something wrong. Okay, so let's have a look at the second part of this question. We're asked to verify that the divergence of the curl is zero. So you're kind of combining these two things together now. So what it says, basically from an applied point of view, is that curls are incompressible. Okay? So you, the f might be the uh, vector field associated with the velocity of a fluid. And we say a fluid is incompressible if the um, divergence of that Velocity field zero. So what it says is that curls are incompressible. That's pretty much what it means. Okay. So let me show you that one. I can probably just just uh, fit it in down here. I reckon. Okay, so we've, we want to take, we, we've got the, the curl of f up here, so we, we spent a lot of time calculating that. All we want to do is take the divergence of that, okay? So, uh, let's do it, yeah, let's do it that way with a column. Okay, dotted with this thing here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this is from part A. Alright, so ddx of this plus ddy of that plus ddz of that. Okay, so the first thing is going to give you negative z. The second part is going to give you z. 
and the third part's going to give you zero. Okay. So how how I would interpret that in a sort of in a semi-physical uh, result is that curls are incompressible. It doesn't work just for this this, this particular setting. It works in the general case. Okay, so, so what's the point of having something like that? It means that if you're doing calculations and you see something like that, you can immediately know that it's zero without doing any calculations whatsoever. That's the point. 